YouTube theologians, how are ya? I, uh, for some reason, the anniversary of September 11th struck me more profoundly this year than it ever has before. I was watching some of the memorials and uh, some of the kind of recap videos. In fact, drive through history, the guys over there did a nice, did a nice video. I, someone remind me, I'll tag a, put a link in the thing, and that's a, a nice sort of thing. It starts out with the first 10 minutes is, is sort of retelling the history of that morning from the audio of the air traffic controllers trying to figure out what in the world's going on. It's wild to listen to. It gives you the kind of goosebumps. But I remember that morning, me and I was at seminary. Me and Pastor Ketchemeyer, I guess it was pre-Pastor Ketchemeyer. He wasn't a pastor yet. Uh, we, were, we were there. It must have been our second year of seminary, first year of seminary. And uh, we were walking to the student commons to play foosball and get a cup of coffee before chapel. And uh, I remember very distinctly figuring out something was wrong because uh, one of our classmates was walking away from the student center. He had a real serious look on his face and he was wearing a white shirt and a dark tie. And I was uh, messing with him, saying he looked like a Mormon missionary. And he didn't laugh at all. He just stone-faced said, go look at the TV. You all no doubt remember where you were too. I mean, this was a pr profound moment. We went in and um, we saw the building burning and it was just quiet. Normally it was a bustling place, you know. Everyone's trying to figure out what, you know, what does this mean? And we were all sitting there watching when the pl second plane crashes into the North Tower and the sort of groans and you know, the frightful conclusions you were reaching. This must be an attack. And, and, and there we were, try, you know, trying to comprehend all this and the bell for chapel started ringing. And I remember thinking, I, I'm not sure we should go to chapel. I want to, you know, I got to see what's going on here. And one of our professors was there and he said, gentlemen, it's time for church. <laughs> so we all went in sort of stunned procession into the sanctuary. I don't, I don't remember who preached that day. They, they, I think I was looking for the sermon because I do remember that Dr. Winthy talked to us, but as I went back and looked for that sermon, it wasn't a sermon. He talked to us after the sermon was over. Dr. Winthy, Dean Winthy, was the president of the seminary then. So we went through the service and through the, the sermon and, and, and everything. I think it was adjusted. They might have even changed the hymns for, to address the tragedy. And um, I, can't, I can't remember any of that, but I do remember that after the service was over, Dr. Winthy stood up and said to us, uh, uh, gentlemen, this is why you're here. This is why you go to class. This is why you're studying Greek and Hebrew and church history and pastoral theology and studying the Lutheran confessions and learning the scriptures. So that you can bring the light of Christ to a world covered in darkness. So that you can bring the, the eternal life of Christ into this culture of death. So that you can bring the word of freedom of the gospel to people enslaved. So we're going to go to school. 
we're going to go to class. We're not canceling school. We're going to go to class and we're going to study and we're going to pray and we're going to work because this is how the Lord Jesus comes to bless us in this fallen and broken and sinful and evil world. And the backdrop of that horrible day be be became this sort of motivating, or at least one of the motivating or at least clarifying parts of our time at school. I think the same thing when the church bells ring today. There's so much trouble in the world. There's so many things going wrong. There's so many things that are dangerous or deadly or frightful, worrisome. church bells are ringing. There's a beautiful hymn. I was trying to think of it this morning. Uh, Built on the rock, the church doth stand. Even when steeples are falling, tumbled have spires in every land. Bells still are ringing and calling, calling the young and old to rest. But above all, to souls distressed, longing for rest everlasting. Here stands the font before our eyes, telling how God did receive us. The altar recalls Christ's sacrifice and what a supper doth bring us. Here stand the scriptures where God tells us of his great love. And I can't remember any of the other words. But this is a, that, that hymn is just a, kind of a perfect encapsulation of this. Into the midst of the darkness, the Lord comes with the with the peace and quiet of sins forgiven. This world is a, a dangerous place. And often dark and full of very evil. But Jesus is not ignorant of these things. I think Dr. Winthy, in a number of ways, had profound wisdom that September 11th, 2001. He recognized the danger to panic the danger to let the emergency destroy God's order and our vocation. He, he recognized the, uh, the danger of heroicism. Sometimes we need heroes to step out there and you know, pick up guns and go to war and all this sort of stuff. But there's a, there's a normal fight and the spiritual battle is done on the... It's done in the small things. I think I realized that day that doing my homework at seminary was spiritual warfare. <laughs> and this is the same for us. When you and, and I go to work, when we go about our vocations, when we bless our families, when we are kind to our neighbors and all these sorts of things, we're, we're doing spiritual warfare. We're really, truly fighting against the devil. Our battle is against powers and principalities, and that means, and Paul reminds us, that our battle is not against flesh and blood. We're not each other's enemies. 
we're fighting the devil in this whole big mess. I think we can forget. I think we can forget that that there's real true evil out there. I think we can forget that life and death is at stake. I, I think we can forget that um, that trouble goes all the way down. That we are real true sinners. I, I think we can forget that that there are consequences to the to the way we look at, look at the world and that there's dangerous consequences even though they might take a little while to show up. I, I, I don't wonder if that's why this anniversary struck me so much because I, you know, I realized my own kids, Hannah was just a baby and the boys weren't even born yet. They don't, they don't, they don't remember. They, they haven't even had a chance to forget. They never knew in the first place. But I think there's wisdom in remembering that. <laughs> that the Lord brings light and life through our vocations and through his word. And that that'll stand. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord that endures forever. God be praised. Uh, Sunday drive home. Hey, here's an announcement. We are hosting a young adult conference, Campus Ministry Young Adults, ages 18 to 35, here at St. Paul Lutheran Church, Austin, Texas, October 1st and 2nd. And I'm going to lecture in the theme of the conference is uh, culturally woke versus biblically enlightened. And I'll give a couple lectures on that topic, and we'll have some breakaway sections as well. We'll have some social events and uh, matins, vespers, Friday night, Saturday morning, August first. Uh, sorry, October first and second, two thousand and twenty-one. Information about that on the website wolfmuller.co, and you hit if you hit the events tab, and you'll see it there, and you can click through and find all the information. If you know someone that that might be interesting for, or you might be interested, come on down. Uh, I think it's free. Or if it's not free, it's not that much. Anyway, uh, culturally woke or biblically enlightened uh, conference for young adults in uh, October 1st and 2nd. We're hoping that at least four or five weddings come out of this conference. <laughs> That's Anyway, it'd be great to see you. Uh, let me know if you need more information. Thanks.